So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined from our guest from San Diego, and that's Jeff McGurn, who is from Business Online, which is a digital B2B marketing agency. Is that right, Jeff? That is absolutely correct, Deborah. Um, you got it. Welcome. Really pleased to have you on board. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, love to hear a little bit about yourself, Jeff. So let's start with your professional and personal best, and then we'll hear a little bit about your business and what you do both in your main business, but also your little sideline that you've got going as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'll start with my personal best. Uh, my personal best is I don't have a ton to be super proud of, I suppose, but I do have a three-year-old uh, kid. Well, she's about to be three-year-old in, in April, a little uh, three-year-old daughter. And despite my best efforts, she's turning out absolutely normal. She's completely <laughs> healthy, which is amazing. Yep. If, if, if you know me that uh, I've been able to keep a little human being alive with some help. Um, and, uh, and she's just, she's just amazing. And then, uh, professionally, um, I was part of a team that, uh, started and built, uh, a digital marketing agency, uh, to be about 250 employees. And then we sold it to, uh, one of the largest agency holding companies, uh, in the world, uh, had a, you know, very, very nice, uh, transition there and, uh, uh sort of helped kickstart, my career. And uh, now I'm working on hopefully doing it again. Excellent. Okay. So tell us a little bit about business online. So uh, B2B digital marketing agency, but what, what is it exactly that you do and, and with whom? So um, business online is a, a B2B digital marketing agency. We focus purely on companies that are, that are B2B companies, and we can uh, take over and manage their uh, paid media, their creative, their analytics, almost any piece of the, the, the digital marketing uh, needs that they, that they may have, and uh, ideally take them to the next level and help them accelerate their business uh, uh, quickly. And that's part of our value proposition is, is uh, uh, performance accelerated or, or speed to value. Perfect. And so how many staff do you have in the team now? We, uh, when I started, I think we had about 35. Now we're at about 70 people, I think. Yep. Um, and, you know, and that's, I think over, we're, that's over we're, two years, isn't it? You've been there for about two years. That's now, over, is that right? Yeah, I've been there for two years. Um, and, you know, we're, our plan is to go to about anywhere from 90 to 100 in the next year or so. Fantastic. And the business itself, though, is a couple of decades. So it's not a new, new business, is it? It's not. It's not. Um, um, you know, I I uh, uh, I met the uh, our our founder um, a couple of year two and a half years ago, and we talked for a while. And he 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 built this business, which is a successful business. But he said, you know, look, there's I, I want to do what what uh, you had some experience doing with a team um, um, many years ago, and I want to take this business and, and build it and, and take it to the next level. You know, what 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 can we do, and 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 can you come on board? Can we do that together? And and that's what we've been doing over the last two years, and you know, we've we've seen a, a, a lot of success. And I'm sure, as you know, you know. Um, you know, I always say when it comes to making a business successful, it's, it's, you know, nobody's bored knowing how to do it. It's something you have to learn. And it's oftentimes best to learn it from other people. And I was very fortunate to, to have the opportunity to be educated on a lot of the ins and outs of, of building a business by some people who had done it before. And, you know, here's potentially my opportunity to, to do it a second time. Excellent. Okay. And so what's your role in the business then, Jeff? So I'm the chief operating officer. Yep. And uh, I, I pretty much, for, for the most part, run most aspects of the business. Yeah. And the business is running on EOS, isn't it? So you, are, yes. you hold the integrator title as well. Is that right? That, that is correct. We, we switched over to EOS um, last year. Well, switched over. We didn't have another system. We were, we were running under the we don't have a system system. Yeah. Um, and then we, we adopted EOS last year. Okay. Can you just tell me a little bit about that sort of journey? And and because you had you come across EOS before, or was this something new for you? You know, it's funny. Um, I had come across EOS before, but it's not something that I think I had seriously considered. Um, um, you know, building into the business, and I think that you know what 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 we had built in the business um, up to the point that that we started considering and eventually ended up implementing EOS. Um, we built a lot of the foundational elements that I think EOS will, will help uh, uh, business owners and, and leaders with. Mm -hmm. But then above and beyond that, you know, there was there was something that I think we felt like we wanted that, you know, now that we'd, we, we had a lot of the foundational elements. Um, 
And that was some of the structure and rigor around uh, business process and, and pushing us forward, moving forward. And, you know, we, we looked at um, some different options and we just felt like EOS was one that would be good for, for us. And, and so far, I think it's been, it's, it's been very successful in helping us push the business forward. Perfect. So um, do you have a favorite EOS tool? Is there something that you've, you know, that you've really found has taken, so you said you've got the basics in place. What was the one thing that has really helped with that business in the last year? You know, um, I'm sure everybody says this, but I, I really, I really like the, the, the level 10 meetings and the, the reason, the reason I really like a level 10 meetings is because in my experience, a lot of, um, a lot of weekly meetings and, and catch-ups degrade over a period of time into, well, what's going on with you? Well, what's going on with you? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think EOS, uh, and especially level 10 meetings help us keep focused in those meetings and always have, uh, you know, a, a pretty concrete agenda. It's not, and it's not that we can't catch up and it's not that we can't discuss some of those things, but they keep us on task and they keep us moving forward and focused on, on those things that are most likely to help propel the business forward. Yeah, I think it's one of those tools. That actually, it, it makes a difference as soon as you start using it, but it just keeps getting better and better over time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, cool. Okay, so so it's been a tough two years. I mean, you joined this business two years ago, and in that two years, we've gone through what global pandemic, potential World War Three about to start. I don't know. <laughs> how how has the business fared throughout that? What have been your challenges, and how have you overcome that? So um, obviously the, you know, global pandemic and a uh, complete economic collapse um, was somewhat challenging um, um, for, for a little while, yeah. but we, we basically, you know, it was interesting when the pandemic hit and, and we had the economic downturn, uh, we kind of all looked at ourselves and we said, okay, look, we we need to take this opportunity to shore up the business. It's not often that you get the opportunity to say, okay, everyone pause. We're going to work on, you know, building out our processes and we're going to work on improving our products and our marketing and, and up leveling, you know, educating our employees. Like your clients typically aren't like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll just stop bothering you for, for a year to do that. But we had the opportunity to do that. And we said, you know, sort of, it was thrust upon us unwittingly, but, but we said, you know, we're going to use this time to better ourselves so that when we come out of this, we're going to be a stronger company than, than we went into it. And we did so in, uh, with our financials. We did so by looking at all of our operating costs and, and trying to streamline everything there. We did so with all of our processes for our service lines. We did so with educating our employees. We, we made sure that we were putting this, uh, that, that time to, to good use. Um, and we got through it without having um, to make any, um, any layoffs. We actually, uh, awesome. we did some targeted pay cuts um, to help shore up the business. Uh, there was some, some pullback in, in spending amongst our clients. But we ended up getting through, um, getting through at least the first year of the pandemic, um, doing, you know, even though the top line revenue was down, we made just as much money as we had made the year before um, in terms of profit, right? Wow. So, so we, did, we did really well there. Um, and then, you know, coming out of it, um, what we saw happen in, in our business was that, you know, B2B companies have always been about five to 10 years behind the times when it comes to, you know, their marketing, right? They yeah. spend a lot of, uh, a big portion of their budget or they had pre COVID, they spent a big portion of their budget on events and, and, and conferences and conventions, trade shows, field sales, sending things to people, flying out and take people to dinner. Yeah. Um, and it may come a shock to you, Deborah, but, uh, wasn't much of that happening after March of 2020, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, but the companies still needed to get results. And so they, they turned their time, energy, efforts, and resources to digital. And I think we were, we were sort of perfectly positioned um, to, to help companies navigate this new landscape and accelerate some of their digital transformations on the marketing front. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that, you know, that's what we've been doing. And the nice thing was we had, shored up a lot of our processes and our service offerings to, to do just that, right? So we were, we were ready to pounce. And over the last year, we've seen just an astounding amount of growth. You know, we've grown the company um, almost 50%. 
Mm-hmm. And um, um, all the while, um, almost unintentionally being, you know, very profitable, um, uh, invested a lot in, in, in the business um, and in, in, in producing great things for our clients. So, you know, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've been able to make it happen. And, and part of that has, has sort of been EOS and some of the things it's, it's helped us do. Okay. So, yeah, interesting. I mean, obviously, yeah, things have changed. You can't do the trade shows, as you said. So what do businesses do in that period? How do they change from what has effectively been ingrained in them for years and years and years around this is how you do business? How do you help them to change that mindset and what can you do for them? So we essentially uh, we essentially sort of began um, focusing on helping them transform their marketing to, um, uh, you know, from going to trade shows to how do we, how do we, how do we reach people at home? Mm-hmm. How do we reach people in channels and on platforms that we normally wouldn't have, have reached them, right? And how do we engage in a meaningful dialogue without being there in person, right? Because you, you still need to engage in a meaningful dialogue. And unlike your typical consumer transaction, right? Where if you're going to go buy toothpaste, you know, I mean, Deborah, how many people do you consult when you decide to try a new toothpaste or <laughs> nobody, you know, I yeah. want to buy a sandwich from this place. I've never bought a sandwich. Yeah, you know, I'll just do it. If you don't like it, you know, it doesn't make well, a difference. Yeah. But, but when a business is going to invest $2 million in a enterprise IOT management platform, there's not one buyer and it's not a decision that's made lightly. You know, these, these, these sales cycles can be, you know, six, 12, 18 months, two years sometimes. And you don't have one, one buyer, you have a buying committee of five people, 10 people, 15 people. And each one of those people has different wants, needs, desires, pain points. And so how do we now reach them in this new digital world? How do we help companies transform the way they market and the way that, that we've been helping a lot of companies? And even though this isn't the only thing we do, we do something called account-based marketing. And it's a strategic approach to marketing where you do a lot of t- spend a lot of time, energy, and effort researching your audience upfront, your, your, your target list of accounts. Yep. And you actually narrow down and you say, instead of trying to target every single company that could buy my product. And there may be 20,000 companies who buy my product, right? I'm going to narrow it down to who my ideal customers will be. And I'm only going to target the 50 or 100 or 400 companies that I think are the most likely to make a purchase of my product and, and actually pay for it. And I'm going to make money on yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, it's almost like the, um, the ERS principle of having that list, you know, the list of your target market to be really, really clear about who that is rather than trying to be everything to everybody. Is that what you're saying? That, that is 100% it. And it's taking those principles and applying them to your marketing program, right? Yeah. And just getting really rigorous and granular about that, like EOS is. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that apart from obviously that your your the, the clients you work with their life has changed your life has changed too throughout this pandemic because you were, when we were talking earlier you said that you made a decision early on to actually not come back into an office yes pandemic. Yeah. So, yeah tell us about that so at, um in about uh what was it uh april of um 2020 we were about a month into the pandemic i went to our ceo and i said look or, uh, you know, and I said, look, here's the deal. Um, we're paying, we're paying these leases. We negotiated the leases when the commercial real estate market was at the top, you know, uh, we're paying, so we're paying a good amount of money on a per square foot basis. People aren't going in and let's be completely honest here. People don't want to go back into the office. I don't think they're going to want to go back into the office. We don't know when COVID's going to be over. We don't know if it's going to be safe to go back in the office. Um, and, and after one month of work, having everybody work from home, our productivity actually went up. Ah, Our people were more, about 15% more productive working from home. So, so I said, look, we have opportunities to exit our leases right now. Let's avail ourselves to those opportunities. And the worst case scenario is we'll say, you know, a year from now, two years from now, we'll say, you know, we were wrong to exit our leases, we'll go get a new lease. And I'm telling you, what we're gonna find 
is that the real estate market's going to be a lot more competitive. The commercial real estate market's going to be a lot more competitive in terms of lease rates. It's going to be a, a renter's market at that point. Um, and, and that's what we did. Um, and since then, we've seen, um, um, we've seen real estate costs, commercial real estate costs drop precipitously. Um, and actually, we, we just signed a lease for an office now, but we're doing something completely different that you would not expect, actually. Oh, can, can you share or is that secret squirrel stuff? <clears throat> no, I, I can share. I can share. So essentially, um, instead of going in back and renting um, um, a regular office, we actually uh, rented a closed down bar and restaurant. Oh, now you got my attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That is inside of Petco Park, which is the baseball stadium um, in San Diego, so so it's 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 at Petco Park. It used to be uh, it used to be a brewery's tap room slash you know tasting room bar restaurant. Um, and our our thought process was this, right? What we we didn't have the same needs as we had before. As we started to talk to our employees and say, "Hey, look, you know, how often do you want to go in the office? How often do you need to go into the office?" We were hearing once a week, twice a week. And, and why do you need to go to the office? Well, I need to go in to um, um, you know, work with a few other folks, have this meeting, have that meeting, but not to sit at a desk and work. And nobody was saying they wanted to go in and work from eight to five. Nobody wanted to. So we said to ourselves, do we need you know, 5,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet with a bunch of desks where we pack people in like sardines and expect them to be in the morning and leave in the evening if nobody is going to want to do that. <clears throat> and, um, and we said, no, you know, what we do need is some common spaces for people to congregate, socialize, to meet. Um, and, and we want a place, a space that's a little bit more uh, suited to social interactions. And as we started to look at a lot of office spaces, we were like, well, these aren't really suited to social interactions. And they weren't places that were super attractive that people were excited about going to and, and interacting with each other in. And then we, and then we found this space. Our, our, you know, we, we told our, our uh, broker, hey, you know, sh show us some interesting stuff. And he showed us this <laughs> closed down bar at, you know, at a baseball park. And he says, uh, what do you think of this? And we're like, this is it. <laughs> This is, yeah. this is so neat, right? Um, and everybody was so incredibly excited. We're, we're, re, uh, uh, we're redesigning the place right now. We're picking out the beers we want on tap. Oh, on tap. And, <laughs> and I think it's going to be, it's, it, you know, everyone is super excited about spending time there. Mm. Um, and we've sort of flipped the model on its head from, you know, what can I do to keep my employees at work to what can I do to make my employees want to come to work? Yeah, I love it. I can't wait to see some photos and things of it. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. So when do you actually move in? We took control of we 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 took control of the property. Uh, actually, sorry, we take control of the property on the first. I think we'll end up moving in, and everything will be moved in hopefully by the fourteenth of of March. Okay, that's great. So some pretty big decisions then being made throughout this time. Well, how do you make those decisions as a team? in the business? <clears throat> so we, we coalesce around the EOS process, right? Um, we, we, you know, we have some, some ground rules that I think EOS has really provided us, right? We're always going to be open and transparent and honest. We're going to bring every issue to the table. Yeah. Um, we're going to prioritize, and then we're going to make sure everything aligns against our mission, vision, values, our, our BHAG, and, and, and that North Star for, for the business, right? I always feel like if, if you know what you want to do and where you want to go, all of your decisions should become easy, yeah. right? Every decision should be pretty easy to make. <clears throat> um, and then we get together as a team. We discuss the ins and outs. And we make a decision and it's not always a consensus because, okay. you know, that, that doesn't always work, but we do what's right for the business. And sometimes your decisions are right. And sometimes your decisions are wrong. And we just have the, you know, sort of the, the fortitude, uh, the fortitude to, to make those adjustments when we know we're wrong and the humility to realize it and, 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 and make the changes that need to be made. 
Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people think that um, using the EOS process is it, it's it's by designed by committee, and it's not that at all. It's about no. uh, consultation, if you like, and getting the best of all of those great minds in the room, but ultimately making the decision that is right for the business. And not everybody will agree. So there must be times we all don't necessarily agree with the decisions you're making. Is that true? One hundred percent. Yeah. There are absolutely going to be times where people don't agree with the decisions being made. Yeah. But but you know that. That's the nature of, of business. Unfortunately, it can't be a democracy because it doesn't function the most effectively. Not everybody has every piece of information in a business and not everybody can have every piece of information within a business. Mm -hmm. And the buck has to stop, you know, somewhere somebody's going to have to make a decision. Hey, I'm really interested, and this is from a personal point of view, so I'm working with a couple of agencies over here in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. and they're, they are both a mix of digital and creative agencies, and there's always been this sort of thing, oh, well, but, but putting a process is going to constrict us, it's going to confine our creativity, and we can't, you know, we're not the same as every other business. What would you say to that? <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that yep. before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think there are some incredibly successful creative agencies that have built their business off of a process. Mm. Uh, I think, I think, um, you know, I, I'm going to get real with you here, Deborah, for a second. I think that's a bit of a cop out. I think you can absolutely be creative and you can absolutely have a process. And look, don't get me wrong. Rules are made to be broken. Yeah. Right. So, so just because we put a process in place doesn't mean it has to be completely rigid. Right. It just means that we have a way to guide us and, and a way to, to repeat and scale um, 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 quality. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the whole point of a business. When you don't put a process around your business and you don't put or think service lines in your business, especially something like creative, it makes it very difficult for you to scale that business mm -hmm. um, um, and grow. Because typically what I hear when, when I hear someone say, and this may not be the case with the creative digital agencies you're working with, when I hear someone say, we can't put a process into place, what, I hear, what I'm hearing oftentimes and, and what usually you see is it's all based around one person or it, it, it's based around one or a few people. And they're saying like, I can't let go control of, of being the person that comes up with the idea or does the creative and... <laughs> Building a business and scaling a business, especially an agency, especially with creative, <clears throat> you have to build that process to scale. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with you. And I mean, we're at the beginning of the journey with these people and they're starting to see that actually it is possible um, and it makes a huge difference. And I think that I can't remember who said it, but somebody said you've got to you've got to um, systemize the predictable so you can humanize the um, the exceptional, which really means that yeah. yeah, your process gives you those boundaries. As you said, they can be moved as well if you really need to, but it gives you the, the structure and the framework so you can actually then become even more creative, even more human in terms of the way that you do things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and by the way, your process can be around people. I'll, I'll tell you a little, um, I'll tell you a little secret about agencies. And you probably already know this having worked with so many companies over the years and worked with agencies. I'm sure you've worked with a lot of them over the years. Um, brands don't buy agencies. Brands buy teams. They buy people. I hear this time and time again. And, and, and I always tell agency owners this, right? Go to your top client who, who's your best client and who loves you and tell them you're, you're taking everybody off their account. And you're changing their team, and your re their reaction is going to be every time they're like, "No way, the they'll leave me if they, you know, they'll leave me if I take their team off." I'm like, and that's exactly it because they're not buying your brand; they're buying the team. You're selling gray matter, but your process can be around um, your process can be around gray matter and how you scale gray matter and how you put teams together and how they interact with each other and how you produce. The, the creative and, 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 and the services that, that, uh, that you give them. Hmm. Can you give me an example? Um, <clears throat> sure, <clears throat> sure. You can build processes around how we do things like creative briefs. 
right? How briefs have to be filled out, how, who has to get the brief, how the brief has to be entertained by the team, how we structure the team, right? How the team interacts with each other. We want every team to have one of this, one of this, one of this, what type of experience the team needs to have. The process can be around um, um, what we, how we allow clients to interact with us and what we force clients to do is they interact with us, right? There are a lot of ways that you can put process and structure and rigor around creative businesses. And, and we do it all the time. And our team produces phenomenal creative, yeah. amazing creative. You, it doesn't have to hinder what anybody can produce. No, I love it. Okay, that's great. And I'm really intrigued to kind of find out within your own team, you talked about the North Star and having that strong vision that helps to guide your decisions that you make. How do you keep that stuff alive, particularly when you're not necessarily all sitting in an office together? What do you do to make sure that's always top of mind? We shove it in our faces as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> we li- <laughs> literally literally we like every one of our quarterly all hands begins with the same exact thing like here's our BHAG here's our mission here's our vision here's our values and every time I say like this hasn't changed in two years and guess what it's not changing anymore <laughs> right yeah, yeah. because that's that's part of what building a business about is about keeping focus yes yeah, it's really interesting because obviously part of EOS, we have our quarterly exchanges too. And every quarterly, our visionary gets up there and he does the same thing. Here are our core values. This is how we work around here. This is what our BHAG is. This is what we're sort of, you know, here's where we've come from. Here's where we're going to. Um, and we forget, you know, that people think, if we keep repeating it over and over again, people will get tired of it. But actually for me, it's a real motivator. Every time I hear that, I'm inspired. Yeah. I go, yep, yeah, that is absolutely 100% why I'm here. And I know that with my teams that I work with when they do it as well, it, it, you have to keep reinforcing it. Um, it helps to weed out the people who perhaps shouldn't be there and it inspires yes. and motivates those who should be there. And, and how are you tracking to it, yeah. right? <laughs> Whatever your BHAG is, <laughs> Are we on our way there? Are we making progress? Are we yeah. taking step back? You know, taking steps backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't just have to be like, "Hey, everyone, this is just a reminder of what this is." No, no, no. This is what we want to be. How are we getting there? Do we really feel like we're living the the values? You know, we've hired all these new people. You know, and and uh, do we see them living the values? How are these values translating into us achieving our our, our BHAG? Right. So it doesn't just have to be a reminder. I, I mean, it is a reminder, but but I think it can be a lot more than that too, yeah. to your point. Beautiful. Okay. Hey, look, we're, we're running out of time. These things always go so fast. I'd love to ask you to share um, three top tips, pointers, tools that you think could help um, people who are, you know, in, in an established business that may be hitting a ceiling and, and want to take that next step, particularly with everything that's going on in the world. What would you say are your top three tips or tools? Um, number one, you know, always focus on work-life balance. I think it's really important not to run yourself ragged and not just your work-life balance, the the work-life balance of your employees. Um, If you put employees, you know, employees are your biggest resource, Mm -hmm. right? Always, always put them first and always try and hire the best and brightest and be willing to pay a little bit more, right? And invest more in, in, in your people. Um, we did that and it, it made a huge, it made a huge difference for the business and it continues to pay off in, in spades. Right. Yeah. Number two, um, understand that there is no silver bullet in building a business. <laughs> right. You know, I, I remember I had, um, a CEO once asked me like, what are the three things you do to, you know, close a big client? I'm like, if there were three things, I would not be here. I'd be on my own private island. Like it's not (laughs) three things. There's not three things that you do to build a business to, you know, a hundred million dollars in revenue. I always tell people, it's not one thing you do to double the size of your business. It's 200 things you do. And each one of them increases the size of your business by half a percent. Mm -hmm. But together, together, they coalesce to make it seemed like it was one big thing. It's lots of little things. Businesses die death by a thousand cuts or they get built by a million bricks, right? Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is, and I see this as a problem in a lot of, a lot of, a lot of small businesses um, is in, in growing businesses focus, stay focused, right? And that's one of the things I loved about EOS and what it helped us do. It it puts some rigor and process around helping us keep focus on the thing that matters and not making lots of left turns, right? It's really easy to be that business that's constantly changing, chasing the, the, you know, shiny object. And maybe we try this, maybe we try this. And I'm not saying don't try new things, 
but, but you have to have a sustained focus and effort on making work what you have and not changing things too often and too drastically too often, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay. And in terms of, so the type of clients that you like to work with, I'm obviously you've defined your, your ideal target market for the agency. What do they look like? What are the, the businesses you love to work with? Typically we love to work with B2B companies that are invested in the power of, of digital. They believe in it. They're investing in it. It's a big part of their growth and acquisition, um, you know, new business acquisition strategy. Um, and, and, and the ones that, that, that want to try new things and do interesting stuff when it comes to digital or the ones that know they need to make a transformation um, into the digital world, right? That yep. the, the way they've been doing things in the past just isn't working. You know, having one sales guy cold call everybody up isn't isn't going to take them to the next level. They need to define their brand and and they need to uh, digitize their marketing efforts. Fantastic. So if somebody wants to get hold of you, how would they do that? Reach out to Jeff McGurn, J E F F dot M A C G U R N at businessol.com. Beautiful. Hey, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for giving me the time. I know we're in different time zones, but I really appreciate you spending the afternoon with me. Um, I will look forward to seeing some photos of that new space. That just sounds like my kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I look forward to seeing the growth that, you know, continued growth that you get um, over the next few months as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me. And if you're in San Diego, we'd love to have you to our our our, our little office <laughs> i will be coming to your bar for sure but yeah no, i'm just going to work on this little thing called a prime minister who won't let us leave our country yet but soon, uh, <laughs> mm, soon. as soon as you're able to leave oh I'll we, be we there. should get we'd, together absolutely yeah we would, would really enjoy that okay well look you have a great rest of the afternoon thank you so much you too um, talk to you soon. thanks so much have a good one